In this video, we will briefly go over the visualization and reporting features that help make clear what is really happening during the data acquisition process, especially if the source drive is not behaving in an optimal manner. We'll begin by connecting a Western Digital USB drive to Gardonix. First, Gardonix establishes communication with the USB bridge chip located on the drive's PCB. At this point, we have USB identification data, but not the rest of the drive's parameters. After the drive finishes spinning up, Gardonix gets to the actual drive beyond the USB bridge, getting access to its capacity, ATA model, and ATA serial number. We could even remove the drive's PCB and connect it to Gardonix, which still allows us to see USB identification parameters, despite the rest of the drive not being there at all. This can be useful for diagnostic purposes to check whether the drive's PCB is functional, but more importantly, it shows how Gardonix works at a much deeper level than traditional forensics tools, which is what allowed us to implement the features we will describe over the next few videos. Having low-level access to the drive allows us to tap into its extensive USB SCSI error messaging system. Many USB storage devices, and even USB adapters, will actually report specific errors over USB, but most traditional forensics tools are simply not sophisticated enough to report these errors to the user. As an example, if we connect only an adapter to Gardonix, the adapter's error messaging system directly tells us that there is an issue with our source device, and that it has aborted initializing. This is handy, because unlike traditional write blockers, which wouldn't show anything in this situation, we don't have to wonder if we are having an issue with our computer, software, or cables. As another example, we have another drive which takes an unusually long time to initialize. It actually reports this fact so we know that we just have to wait instead of wondering what could be wrong or trying to reconnect cables. Now that the drive initialized, Windows starts mounting it. As always during the mounting process, Windows tries to update various metadata. Having a sector map allows us to see exactly what is happening in real time. Green sectors are successful reads, and there is also a number of blocked write attempts, which are marked with blue in the sector map, and also recorded in the log. Naturally, the log can be saved in case there is an interest in investigating all the sector addresses that applications or services running on our PC tried to modify. Browsing the drive causes more write attempts as Windows tries to update various metadata for each accessed file and folder. This is all standard Windows functionality, and it's one of the main reasons why write blocking is necessary to preserve evidence. Lastly, when imaging a drive, we can instantly see a graph of its speed in real time. In this case, the speed started off quite slow and increased over time. When the drive's speed randomly changes by such a large percentage, it almost always indicates that the drive is starting to degrade physically, so it should be imaged and turned off as soon as possible. On that note, Gardonix can also automatically turn off the source drive due to inactivity, preventing unnecessary degradation. That's all for this video. In the next one, we will go over the pros and cons of software write blocking through the registry. Thank you for watching.